Today starts in Disney's California Adventure, and we actually knew one of the people who was driving that trolley. Not like personally, but we'd met her before. Her name is Shad. And one time when we were riding it, we made friends with her. Just, you know, had a conversation the whole time. She was very friendly. I recognized her immediately. One of the features here is Grizzly Peak. It looks like a grizzly bear. There is a ride on the other side of that called Grizzly River Run, which is like a big inner tomb ride. It's a lot of fun, but we're not gonna ride it because we don't wanna be wet when we're trying to get back on a plane tonight. But I love those waterfalls. I always have, I like waterfalls. And those ones are pretty good. I don't know if this is easy to see, but there's a Disney kitty up there cleaning itself. One thing a lot of people don't know is that Disney has a bunch of cats on property that keep the mouse population down. Now they spay them and they take care of them, so they're not just abandoned cats, but they are feral, so they don't really come out and hang out with people. But yeah, uh, we've never seen one here before. I've seen a couple in Disneyland in the past. Here's a little better view. You can see the side of the face. He or she was just looking at us earlier. That's a kitty. Warming himself in the sun. We rope dropped Radiator Springs Racers, so we're going into Cars Land now, which we didn't spend too much time in last time, so we're going to spend more time in this time. Um, maybe get something to the cozy cone later, but yep, we're heading there now. Stay on the right place. Not that we're going to experience much of this because we're some of the first people in line, but I've always liked this queue. You know, if you're going to stand in it. It's just very well themed. I particularly like the uh, bottles that comprise this structure. Just old bottles. I mean, I don't know if that's real or not. It's probably not. So nobody could break them, but... Oh, here we go. Genuine oil bottles. And they look really cool with the light coming through them. About 25 minutes since they rope dropped. We're on this ride now. Not too bad. <laughs> yeah. This is fun. 
everybody. Gonna do Luigi's Rockin' Roadsters. This used to be a ride where you got into big tires and it was essentially a big air hockey table. But uh, that proved a little problematic. Like the first time we tried it in Disney a long time ago. Um, so they replaced it with this ride, which is a trackless ride where the cars just kind of go and dance around. So it's not nearly as exciting as bumper cars on a air hockey table, but it's still fine. So a little special right now because they're doing honking Halloween here, which I'm sure is just Halloween themed music. I'm not sure if the dance is going to be any different, but it's cool that they think about that. I also really like the L on the ground there. Just these kinds of details are so cool. Like the planters look like tires, right? Just different kinds of tires. So this is essentially what it is. The cars just kind of go around and then sometimes they go in unison and yeah. It's not the most thrilling ride you'll ever be on, but it's fun. And I bet kids love it. Definitely doing something different than they did last time. Oh, now we're all in a row. got the Avengers vehicle over there. Okay, you think that'd be S.H.I.E.L.D.? Oh no, S.H.I.E.L.D.'s not around anymore. They can't have S.H.I.E.L.D. vehicles. <clears throat> Last time we were here, we ate at the Pimp Test Kitchen and we had something at the um, bar next to it. And the there were three of us. Good, the food was good, the drinks were good, but yeah, overall, $100. it ended up being $100 for the three of us. We'll never do that again. No way. And most of it was the alcohol, right? Like each drink was 20 bucks. So there's $60 right there. So food itself is normal pricing, a little bit more because it's specialized. But um, although the drinks were good, it's, I would never pay $20 for that drink again. It wasn't that good. We're on our way to the uh, Mission Breakout, Gardens of the Galaxy. Oh look, it's Wasp. How cool, look at that. She's just out wandering around, so I was gonna take a picture with her. How neat, that is really cool. We grabbed a lightning lane for this first thing, but then went and rode those other rides first. And now we have about 15 minutes left and we're okay. So we're gonna go in here and do some mission breakout. Keep an eye on that Walkman, we'll revisit that later. My friends, you're one step closer to your exciting encounter with the Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> You're now standing in my private office. I know! Where I Carefully scrutinize each and every piece that comes to me from different parts of the galaxy, and I grab let's you this guy! Hearing your incessant blathering on a constant loop was big motivation for me to escape. I go, ouch! Ow! That was not part of the plan! What? <laughs> of course I escaped! For those of you who have not been paying attention, the name's Rocket, one of the Guardians of the Galaxy. The smart one. Listen up, he's gonna put you on a gantry lift for your tour. I'm gonna sneak on top of your lift 
and take us all the way to the big old generator control room. I'm gonna blast that thing and destroy all the control systems, which will open up every cage in this freak show and free my friends. Our buddy Mantis is in the getaway ship waiting for my signal, and then we'll be on a merry way. But this plan won't work unless you help. I don't have clearance. My hands don't scan. Yours do. If you raise your hands, I get the clearance, and the chaos begins. <laughs> it's a foolproof plan. Huh. I'm gonna take this. Now move it. The rocket unplugs you and start things rocking. Now show me oh, those hands, hard. people. <laughs> you got clearance. Let's roll. We came into the Superstore, which is right next to Monsters, Inc. We came over here to ride Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor. No, not Laugh Floor. Monsters, Inc. Something with the doors. Anyway, because it said it was only five minutes, but when we got here, it was closed. So, not going to be doing any of that. But uh, they do have some DTAC stuff over here. Some pre-made stickers and phone cases and watch bands. God, I really like that watch band. I have one from here. It's a Sorcerer Mickey watch band, but I really do like that one too. I would absolutely wear that. And they have phone cases for the old style AirPods and the newer style AirPods. And you can tap over there to uh, create one of your own if you want to. And they have some just on display phone cases. Josh is gonna be getting that one all the different Spider-Men. Spider-Mans. One thing over here I thought was cool is um, the X-Men 92 pins. I used to watch the show. I was in college when it came out and so I remember that we would have a watch party with all of my friends in my dorm room uh, when the show was on. It was a lot of fun. Good memories. And they actually have comic books here too. That's kind of cool. Mike and Sully to the rescue finally came up. So we are going to ride that. It's only a 10 minute wait right now, which is probably just a walk on. Obviously it's being worked on right now. You can see all of the scaffolding up. Hello, 
If you are new to the area, the Monstropolis Chamber of Commerce would like to welcome you. While you're in town, be sure to... We have this program for a special report. A child is on the loose in Monstropolis. A human child! If witnesses are to be believed, there has been a child security breach for the first time in monster history. We can neither confirm nor deny the presence of a human child here tonight. I tried to run from it, but it picked me up with its mind powers and shook me like a dog. It's true! I saw the whole thing! Happy birthday, Smokey Moe! Oh, Gilly, man! Oh, this human child froze me with its telepathic control. It made me dance like a chicken. Oh, boy, we gotta get you home. person talking there. Here's an opportunity for me to show you some Christmas merchandise when there's not a bunch of people fawning all over it. <laughs> I'm kidding, they have every right to. Uh, we've got this sweater here for uh, 60 bucks. That's actually kind of nice. I do like that sweatshirt. That is 55. Uh, got the ears. Ears are one size fits all. Come on, there's gotta be a price on these, right? Uh, not that I see. Maybe this one does? No. I don't know how much those are. This is a Disney Spirit jersey. That's the back. And oh, one of them fell. That's the back. That's the front. And this, I believe, is a hundred bucks. Let's see. Oh, sorry. Yep, hundred bucks. And this is 45. Josh looked at it earlier. That's pretty for a long sleeve shirt. And then there's this one. Which is this? It doesn't say. 
Here's another spirit jersey. I really like that one. Other than saying Disneyland, it's not very Disneyland branded, right? It's just kind of generic imagery. I love the squirrels though. Uh, this one is, I'm guessing it's also hundred bucks, but I'm kind of surprised at how much we're not seeing prices on these things. And then some generic stuff like, you know, Christmas Mickey. It's a cool magnet. Chocolates, uh, Mickey hat. Josh and I are commenting that we almost never go this way. We usually go to like where the Incredicoaster is and then work our way around the other way. But we almost never walk this way. But our uh, lunch isn't for two and a half hours and we felt like we wanted to have a corn dog before we hopped on the roller coaster. That may or may not be a great idea, but we're going to do it anyway. Anyway, in Disneyland, it's a little cart at the end of Main Street. Here, it's the corn dog castle where we will enjoy our corn dog. We couldn't decide on the traditional corn dog and the hot link corn dog, so we got both. Well, we're going to be sharing our lunch anyway, so this is a kind of a bigger snack than we would have otherwise got, but we wanted to try both. We got some messages from ketchup. Each comes with either chips or a cutie. We got both because we got one of each. And then we got a soda. The music or the sounds you hear behind me are a Coco-themed mariachi performance. And I did record one of the songs, so I'll put that here. of the Coco thing, they have the Plaza de la Familia, which is definitely food, because there's like a pizza place, some Mexican food. Feel free to pause on this if you want to. Maybe in both English and Spanish, talking about the Day of the Dead. Which is coming up, it's the day after Halloween. So, true to life. Oh, and it looks like there's some sort of crafting going on here. People putting their names on stuff and hanging it up. That's kind of cool. Let's see. Let's see what this says. Amongst the most beautiful traditions that bring families and friends together, celebration of those you love. Write down and share a meaningful memory about someone dear to you. And then I guess they put it all up over there. That is so cool. This is the inside out emotional whirlwind. I think it's just a repurposed Bugs Land. This one used to have like apple juice boxes and stuff that were the bases. It's okay, this was an empty spot, so might as well put something here. Looks fun. It's taking us a while to get over here. But the next ride is the Incredit Coaster, and we have our lightning lane for it, and it's just about time. It's almost actually ended, but uh, we're here on time to go. I won't be able to film this because it's a thrill ride, and they'll yell at me if I have my camera out. So you'll just have to take my word for it that it's a lot of fun. You can tell it's going to be a roller, good roller coaster when they have the overhead restraints. Now you know it's going to be a good one. And listen to that. If that's not her, Holly Hunter, then that's a really good imitation. We enjoy the credit coaster, previously known as the California Screaming Roller Coaster. It is built to look like a traditional 
wooden roller coaster from way back in the day, but it's a steel coaster. And so it's fast, it launches you to begin with. So it's not the slow going up kind of roller coaster and then you go, it actually launches you out of the start. And uh, it has a loop-de-loop -loop in it, which is really cool. Anyway, the theme is Jack-Jack has, they're all trying to get Jack-Jack, right? He's mischievous. And so he, uh, Edna's watching him. There it goes. Edna's watching him, he disappears, and then the rest of the family is trying to grab him throughout the rest of the ride. It's a lot of fun. And one thing I really like is that the music is in the coaster with you rather than ambient, there are speakers in the coaster. So whatever's happening, you can hear it really easily because it's coming out of speakers that are right near your ears. Anyway, if you ever come here you and you like roller coasters, you cannot go wrong with the Incredicoaster. The next ride is the Silly Symphony Swings, which only has a five minute wait. Honestly, as soon as this group is done going, we'll be next. That's how slow the wait is. So cool. And here's a good view of the Pixar Pal Around. It used to be called the Mickey Fun Wheel. There's the coaster we were just on. You can see some of Cars Land over there. You can see the uh, Mission Breakout in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, it's a nice view from up here. What if we get a coaster going by? Finally got it. I love how you raise up first. It's like a levitation. And then the storm begins. <laughs> I love swing rides. Ah, you can see two of the hotels. Paradise Pier over there. Grand Californian over there. Pretty much that over and over again, but I love swing rides so much. Come on, you can do it. Let's march. Woo! Very good. We got those feet. Uh oh, I hear the vacuum cleaner. Get down. Get down. You do not want to get sucked up into the vacuum. Take it from me. Oh, okay, man. No, I, I said get down. Not get down. Two, three, four. All right, stand back up. Back to the mark. I don't know, but I've been told. I don't know, but I've been told. Oh, much better. Army greens worth more than gold. Army greens worth more than gold. Hey, you step along. Playtime's almost never done. Playtime's almost never done. Join our squad and have some fun. Join our squad and have some fun. That's right, you people look like you're ready to have some fun. Up next is a drill we call Operation Freeze. As you know, toys are required to freeze whenever anyone enters the room. Allow my man to demonstrate. All right, put your hands together. We're getting funky in this toy box. That's right. It's a toy dance party. Let me hear those magic words. Those magic words. I'll have a little reverb for you. That's right. In the category of rides we almost never ride, we've got the Jumpin' Jellyfish. It's more of a kid's ride. It just kind of goes up and drops down, but not drastically. Uh, we've ridden it before, but you, you know, if you've ridden it once, you've ridden it a million times. And then also the Golden Zephyr over here, which is really just a spinner ride. 
it's not bad of one, but there's nothing special about it. So we don't tend to come back here and ride these very often. And then Goofy Sky School, back there used to be called Mulholland Drive, which is just more like a tooth chipper kind of ride. It's one of those tight turns kind of roller coaster type things. I don't know if roller coaster is the right term for it, but that's back there. I know you can't see it very well. Here they go up. And then they just drop down. Then they go up again, like that. It's that kind of a ride. So if you have a kid who would be terrified on a drop ride or something like Tower of Terror or the Mission Breakout, then this would be perfect for them because it's not that intense. We're walking into Pacific Wharf, which is essentially just a bunch of restaurants. There's not really any rides or attractions here, but Josh was telling me that they're gonna be transforming this into San Francisco from Big Hero 6, which is fine. It's just gonna be an overlay really. But, uh, oh, that means there'll be more Asian food here, probably. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a mix of things. Like, right now, there's, like, uh, Cucina Cucamonga, which is Mexican. Over there is a cafe and bakery, which does a lot of um, uh, bread bowls, right? Uh, bread bowls with soup in them. Yeah, Pacific Wharf Cafe. We've had it before. It's pretty good. We're not eating here because we have our reservation later, but... Um, yeah, I thought there was a Chinese one. Yeah, it's over here. Okay. And then this is the place that serves the margaritas out of the Slurpee machines. Oh, those are dangerous for me. Can suck down those things all day. Oh man, it's gone up over the years. But I think they have a strawberry and a traditional lime. Halloween. Decided to do the Mater ride, which is Halloween themed right now. He just sings Halloween themed songs. It's not gonna knock your socks off, but it's fun when you swirl around like that. Well, tilt a whirl ride. All right. See how long this ride actually is. Uh, we haven't quite swung yet, but it's gonna happen here in just a second. Here we go. Whoa! <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, we're gonna swing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna swing. Here comes the swing. Oh, that's fun. Oh. Here comes one. <laughs> Oh, not really the power Ah, it's done. We saw Wasp earlier. She's actually standing over there too. But now we have Ant-Man. Ant-Man. And Wasp. Huh. That's so cool. Those are two of my favorite characters from the books. And I'm really glad that they finally got to be in the movies. And I'm very much looking forward to their next movie, Quantumania. We haven't been to this restaurant in a long time, but it was one of our favorites, the Wine Country Trattoria. And here are their appetizers. We're gonna find out what the soup is. And then the entrees. Probably gonna split the um, chicken parmesan. And they also have a lot of drink choices. Some specialty drinks over here. Beer, cider, seltzer, wine flights, and then a bunch of different wines. And then on the back, there's a kid's menu and desserts and non-alcoholic drinks. Something for everybody. Everybody likes Italian. We are splitting the chicken Parmesan, which is usually enough for both of us. Perfect. And then we also got Italian wedding soup, which is what the soup of the day was. We were gonna get an appetizer, but we both when like Italian that, wedding soup. We were like, yes. Yeah, looks like a nice piece of chicken. Good, yeah. good size meal for the two of us. Fine size Plus meal. some soup. 
lunch was very good. We really enjoyed our chicken parmesan. It's perfectly cooked, not too burned. Nice, light, crispy uh, fry, very nice. Yeah, it was lightly fried, crispy, it was good. Um, the soup was really good too. Yeah. Although, not that much better than say like a can of yeah, Progresso soup. So I don't know if that was worth the $8 for the little thing of soup we got. But it was good. I'm not saying that, it's just wasn't, it wasn't great. Yeah, whereas the chicken parmesan was great. Really good. Yeah, so that was absolutely worth it. And um, now we're heading back into Avengers Campus, if you can't tell from the music, because we have a lightning lane for web slingers. It was down earlier, so they converted that into a multi-experience pass, and we used it as an opportunity to ride Guardians again. Uh, but now we're gonna go and do the lightning lane over here and it looks really, really long right now. Whoa. I'm sure because it was down earlier, people who had lightning lane passes might be using it for this now that it's up. Anyway, probably still better than the regular line, so let's give it a go. The open house. <laughs> and now our project lead, the brilliant Peter Parker. Hey, what's up? I'm Peter Parker. Here at Web, we got access to some pretty awesome tech like Vibranium from Wakanda or this crazy alien juice stuff. We have Pin Particles and Star Tech. It all helps us develop really cool stuff like um like these spider bots, for example. Check it out, they have this really cool self-replicating feature. Because Never. Uh, this is awesome. Yeah, no. But you can stop doing that now. But anyway, you guys are here today to help us test the web slinger vehicle. Using all board tech, you will be able to sling webs just like my buddy Spider-Man. Peter, your presentation is getting away from you. Yeah, I'm a little bit sure. If you could just initiate the safety protocols, I'd be great. Problem with that, so Peter. Anyway, if you want to sling a web, all you got to do is sling your arm in the direction you want to shoot the web. And that's it. It's awesome. Peter, your spider bots are continuing to replicate and are consuming everything in their path. I love it. They seem to be stuck in self recognition mode. If you could just handle that for me, please. On it. Contacting Mr. Stark. Don't call Mr. Stark! She's dead. Sorry, Could you just call someone else to ask them to do it? Okay. Contacting Spider Man. Um, I'm gonna go find Spider Man for a because he's a lady or something. Okay. Spider Man! As you may have noticed, the Spider Bots are locked in that awesome self replication mode. In spite of what you see, they were created to be robotic helpers that can break down raw material and create all kinds of useful tech. But because they are stuck in self replication mode, the Spider Bots are currently consuming everything in sight and multiplying at an alarming rate. Left unchecked, my calculations predict this will lead to the devastation of the entire Avengers campus. Should be safe until Spider-Man gets here, as long as they don't get into the alien fluid. This is now a bigger problem. Activating threat level protocols. Hey guys, what's up? I hear you have a problem. I'm here to help. You made it. Great. Threat level is at exponential danger. We might need some help. Perhaps I'll call the Avengers? Don't worry, everyone. I got this. Okay, everybody, open access cancel. Quite idea. But I can use some help. Yes, you could. Sharon, prep the slinger vehicles. Already on it. Everyone head to the slingers and we'll team up to stop the spider bots before they destroy the campus. It's easy. Okay, we have a plan. Please move quickly through the doors and down the hall to the slinger vehicle. I've decided I am not a big fan of that Spider-Man ride. I actually like rides that are also games, but the targeting system on this is terrible. Uh, especially if you're on one of the outsides. It, there's four seats if you're on the outsides. Like after the first game, everybody else had like in the 78,000 and 80 something thousand. I had 36. I just couldn't hit anything no matter how hard I tried. So yeah, it's not awesome. And every time I've done it, I felt that way. So. Eh, I love it in concept, but in execution, I don't think it works very well. Hey, we got Captain Marvel over here. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, she looks pretty good, too. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I like how they just have them out running around. Wow. We have uh, Falcon Captain America. I was like Sam. Even long before he was Captain America, I always thought he was pretty cool. Yeah, he looks really good, honestly. That is a great outfit. It actually looks 
good. Yeah, it actually looks, yeah, workable. If you want to get out of the hot sun and enjoy some air conditioning, you can come to Beast's Library, which is in the uh, Sorcerer's Workshop area. You can also do, I think, at least last time we were here, you could ta uh, answer some questions about yourself. It would tell you which character you were from Beauty and the Beast. But what I love is like right now it's all bright and shiny and you've got the picture of the of the beast as Prince Eric, I think that's what his name is. Or Adam, I'm sorry, Prince Adam is the name of the beast, although it's never said in the movie. Um, but then it will all change as if it's cursed. All right, Josh is gonna do this here. Bonjour, touch the glowing bookmark and the enchanted book will show you your true character. Enchanté. It is with the greatest pleasure that we will now show you which Disney character is most like you. My assistant, please. Your assistant. Oh, hold on, it's changing. See, it's getting darker in here. And the lion turns into like a gargoyle kind of lion. The beast gets the ripped up um, portrait and then the fire goes out down there. Pretty cool, huh? All right, Josh's gonna do this. <laughs> it is perfect, yes? If not, you may try again. Wonderful. I will save your portrait for the final chapter. But first, we must learn a little bit about the wonderful personality that is you, sir or madame. When you have a problem, would you rather talk it out with friends? Do you see yourself as more... Sensible or more imaginative? Are you ruled more by your passion of heart or your logical head? Do you usually like to plan things out or wait to see what happens? Very good. One more question we must ask. Would you rather eat lunch with nice people? Nice people for lunch. Yeah. You are protective, devoted, and patient. You are kind, and you'll open your door for anyone in need. You are most like Sonny. Do you have it? No, I do love a happy ending. Au revoir to me. Near the entrance of the park, they have Clarabelle's hand scooped ice cream and you can make your own bar. So you can choose the kind of ice cream you want. Josh got vanilla bean, and then you can dip it in hard, or in, in milk or dark chocolate, and then you can use your toppings, and Josh got the Mickey sprinkles, essentially. They also, they didn't used to have this when we were coming before, hand-dipped banana in dark or milk. I got milk, chocolate. And then you can get some of the toppings, some of the same stuff that Josh could get. Like, there's sprinkles, and there's like flavored berry stuff, and. Uh, in this case, I wanted nuts on it because that always goes well with a chocolate covered banana. This looks really good. The overall, the cost was twelve fifty nine for the two of these. The goof is out running around. His line's not even that long. There's no photographer here with him, just a handler, but you know, she'll take pictures on your phone. It's pretty cool. Looks like he's in a scarecrow outfit. I love it. I like Goofy a lot. He's one of my favorite characters. It's 3.15 in the afternoon, and I want to give you an idea of what the wait times look like for the various rides. Uh, it wasn't too busy this morning, but it's definitely started to pick up. Like the big rides, Radiator Springs Racers, 100 minutes, Gardens of the Galaxy, Monsters After Dark, 100 minutes. But yeah, all the way down to five minutes for Jesse's Critter Carousel, but yeah. Uh, everything's fairly busy right now. And there's a good number of shows, which is cool. We decided to hop a ride on the red car trolley, and I love how the railroad crossing essentially goes off to warn people that it's coming. It doesn't go that far, but it's still fun to ride. 
I love the ads they have up on here, like the old ones that have had Carthay Circle, which is actually just right over there. Hyperion Theater, which will pass. Watch the wigwag, that's the sign I was just showing you. Elias and Company is one of the stores out there. And Clarabelle's, which we just ate at. There's others over there too. Some of them are duplicates, but I love it. Um, Elias is Walt's middle name, Walter Elias Disney, and his father was Elias. That's why Elias comes in. This license actually has some very special numbers on it. It says 11, 18, 19, 28. It's actually the birthday of Mickey and Minnie Mouse. I know their birthday is coming up. So if you guys are here on the 18th, make sure you wish them a very happy birthday. Alrighty, folks, as we continue to around Carthay Circle, we're about to turn left onto Buena Vista Street. Buena Vista Street is modeled after LA circa the 1920s and 1930s. It is an idealized version of what Walt Disney saw when he first arrived here in California. Buena Vista, by the way, is Spanish for good view, which we have plenty of in our little cozy corner of California Venture. One of these views, if you look right behind us towards the Carthay Circle Restaurant and Lounge, you can see that big, beautiful blue sky. I'd say that's pretty beautiful if I do say so myself. Up on the left and right hand side of the trolley, we have our mom and pop shops on Buena Vista Street, such as Big Top Toys, Mortimer's Market, and Julius Cats and Sons. These shops are open to you up to one hour after Carthay Circle to shop at your leisure. Nice leisurely ride. You can't, you can't reason with a headless man. That is an appropriate song because it is the Halloween time. Right over here on our left, we are passing the headless horseman over there. We do invite you as dust settles to listen to the creepy music and the clomping of the horse that goes on over there and the smoke that comes out of the pumpkin head. It's creepy and fun at the same time. Great place for a photo. I highly recommend that. Folks, we've entered into the beautiful glitz and glamour of Hollywood. I hope you all have your headshots and resumes ready. You never know who's going to be the next big star. Ben and I had our shot, folks. It's all up to you. Yes, indeed. Folks, here on our left, you're going to see the beautiful Sunset Theater, home to Mickey's Phil R. Magic. A great show of sight and sound. You get to wear some opera glasses, make things look a little 3D. You know what? Donald may butt his way into the show. <laughs> If you've seen the show, you know it's on the budget. <laughs> Folks, we're coming into Hollywood. Please remain seated until the trolley comes to a complete stop. Those doors have opened. Animation building to your right, Mike and Sully to the rescue on your left. Of course, Schmoozy is one of the best places. One thing I noticed about being on the red car trolley is, and I'm sure you've all figured this out just by having lived, is that many people do not have situational awareness. <laughs> like the trolley's coming up right behind them because it goes right in the middle of the street. You can see behind me here. I'm walking on the tracks, right the it's right in the middle of the street, and they're honking and they're honking and people are just wandering or trying to cross and it's like, you need to be able to see what's around you and be aware of that. But that's I know, the general here. yeah, Disney is a very safe place, but one of the reasons accidents happen is because it's so safe, people aren't taking the precautions that they need to. Anyway, just my suggestion, you need to make sure that you uh, have situational awareness when you're here, because it is safe, but, it's not like you can't fall off a curb or something. to say goodbye and head off to the airport, but there's one last thing we need to do first, and that is to go find our little piece of Disneyland. And there it is, our little piece of Disneyland that we bought back in 2011. I went looking for it this morning, but people were standing on it, so I, could, I didn't want to push them out of the way. Uh, anyway, yeah, back in 2011, we bought it for about 120 bucks, and we, uh, 
found out that it essentially has to be here for at least 10 years or they'll give you some of the money back. Well, now it's been 11 years and continuing to go. I don't see them ripping us out anytime soon, but it's pretty cool. People to get to go here and stand on our names while they're waiting in line at entrance number 16. So if you're ever looking for it, just come to entrance number 16, which is right near where the gate is between the areas where you can check in. There's one over there and one over there. I got it. I got you. And you'll find our little piece of Thank you land right there. It makes me happy every time to see it. That is going to do it for us for our Disneyland trip. It was a whirlwind in and out. Came in yesterday morning and we are leaving. Uh, yesterday was a Saturday. We came in Saturday morning. We're leaving Sunday afternoon to head to the airport. The nice thing about living in Denver and Disneyland being in California is that we gain an hour when we come here. So if we leave at say 9.30 in the morning, which is when the plane, the plane we usually take leaves, gets here about 11ish, then we just have to get to the park and then we can spend usually between noon and midnight in the park. And then we get up the next morning, we spend as much time as we can in Disney California Adventure, which usually ends up being about eight or nine hours. And we're good. And that's good. Today like, was like eight yeah. hours. In fact, we started running out of things to do at the end there. Yeah. So we spent eight hours. Um, we rode everything we wanted to. We <laughs> ate places we wanted to. We got a lot done on this trip. Thank you again for joining us. See you in the next video.